Hey guys, this is Sam, and today developers finally got their hands on iOS 10.3, and right now we're going to talk about everything that changed. So up first is the lack of a dark mode in iOS 10.3. That was kind of the big rumor, quote unquote. I know I made quite a few mentions and videos about it here, and unfortunately it just didn't happen. That happens with rumors sometimes, they're off, but there's actually an Apple support document or Apple document that was published that says a theater mode is supposed to be coming to the Apple Watch very soon. So I'm assuming this is something that like silences your notifications and dims the screen or something like that so your phone can be used in a theater. We don't know what it exactly is just yet, but of course if you're subscribed, I'll make more videos on that as soon as we know exactly what this theater mode is. But moving on to some changes that did happen, if we launch up the settings app, at the very top of the screen you will see this brand new section right here. It's going to say the iCloud account that you're signed into. So for me, I'm signed into my own iCloud account. It says my name up at the top with my Apple ID, iCloud, and iTunes and App Store preference panels. Tapping on that is going to bring you to this new unified preference panel which includes iCloud and the iTunes and App Store preference panels along with your phone number, email, basically your basic iCloud preference information. Down down below you have a list of all your devices that are currently linked to your account and it's pretty convenient. Not a fan that I have to blur this out every single time that I make a video from now on, but it is a lot easier to access. Moving on, I used to be really into podcasts, but I've lost interest in recent months just because I'm not driving as much as a college student. But if you do listen to podcasts and you like widgets as well, then you're in luck because iOS 10.3 adds a widget to the podcast app. Nothing special whatsoever, it looks very similar to the music app widget, but it's there if you want it. Now this next feature is what I would consider the flagship feature for this release, but unfortunately it it's only going to help you if you own AirPods already. It allows you to use the Find My iPhone functionality only for AirPods, so Find My AirPods. I haven't had the ability to test it just yet, but there's a few screenshots that I've seen and it looks pretty handy. So if you had a fear of losing your AirPods or thought they might get stolen, you can basically track them like any other Apple device now and it's super convenient. In the Maps app in iOS 10.3, you can now 3D touch on this weather degrees icon in the bottom right hand corner of the screen and it will now show you an hour view of what the weather's going to be like. But honestly, I can't see myself using this really ever. It seems like kind of a wasted feature and like, don't get me wrong, I'm all about new features, but I can't ever see myself 3D touching on this little tiny corner of the Maps app. If you go ahead and press even harder on that to use the pop functionality, it'll shoot you over to the Weather app, but I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this. Are you ever going to 3D touch on that weather icon in the Maps app? Now these next few changes were things that are kind of behind the scenes and more internal, and I wish I could show you or illustrate them better, but I really can't right now because they're not 100% there in the beta, because a lot of it is waiting on developer support. First up is with Siri and HomeKit. So HomeKit has support for programmable light switches, not a huge update in my opinion, but it's there in iOS 10.3. And also you can now use Siri to check on your payments and pay your bills. If my banking app updates this, I think that would be awesome to just be like, hey, pay this bill with money from my checking account. But I'll be interested to see how that works in the future. Once again, that's one of those features that's waiting on developer support before I can show you anything. And if you're an Apple developer, you're gonna love these next two changes. So number one, there's now a way to actually implement a built-in app store review into your app that's standardized. So users won't have to go over to the app store to leave a review now, they can actually do it straight from the app or straight from within the app they were already using, which I think is absolutely awesome. And now developers have the option to publicly respond to reviews left on the iOS and Mac app stores, which I think is going to be great for transparency. Now one last change I want to highlight in iOS 10.3 that's actually pretty big but entirely behind the scenes, is that when you upgrade to iOS 10.3 it's going to use an entirely new file system on your device called the Apple File System, or APFS. And I haven't really noticed any usability changes or changes on the surface or speed wise just yet, but the file system did change and I thought you guys would be interested in knowing. All right, so if you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to drop a like down below, I would really appreciate it. And of course, subscribe to be the first to know about new information regarding iOS 10.3 in the future. I've been Sam, I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you later.